This is Math 99, Section 8.7, and we're doing function notation. So uh, we've talked about what functions are. Remember, functions are these, are these machines. You can think of them as these uh, machines that basically take an input. And as they take an input, they spit, they do something, maybe, uh, but they, they spit out some output. So basically, they're an association of inputs and outputs, functions. And in order to be a function, each input has to be matched with exactly one output. So you can think of it as a, as a machine. And, and we have a notation for functions. Um, we basically could say something like um, f of something. So I could call my function f. I could call it g. I could call it h. There's all sorts of different um, letters I can use. You just kind of do kind of more of a, uh, a fancy script <laughs> when you use it. Um, but let's say that I told you I had this function f, this box. It takes in inputs and it spits out outputs. So my input goes here. So with this, with this function f, let's say that uh, I put in a 5 and it does something. I'm not sure what it does, but it spits out an 8. What I would say is um, f of 5 is equal to 8. Notice f of 5. If I input 5 into f, it will give me an 8. That's what this tells me. And uh, let's say I try another thing, and I, I put in 7, and it spits out 10. I would say f of 7 is equal to 10. Um, and if I had another machine, I'll, I'll, I'll just call it a G. And I'm just drawing my little machine. And if I, let's say I, spit, I put 7 into G, and it actually spits out negative 5. I would say um, G of 7 equals negative 5. So I have a couple of pieces here um, for my function, uh, for the notation for it. I can use f, g, h, like I said, I can use anything. I'll just use f again. So this is the name of the function. And then whatever's in here is the input. So f of some input, if I put this input into f, it's going to give me an output. So I could, um, one way I could think about these is I, I'll, I'll start to define some functions. Because right now I've done them as these, as these mystery boxes. So let me define some functions. So I'm going to tell you that f of x is 3x plus 10. This still kind of matches this input output. My input is x and my output is whatever 3x plus 10 is. So this is actually a function written as a rule. And actually, I can, I can calculate it pretty well. If I was said uh, f of 10, so notice now, here's my machine. My machine, I can see the inner workings in the machine, 3 times the input plus 10. So instead of x, I'm just going to put like, whatever the input is. So if I plug 10 into this, I'm just going 3 times whatever the input is plus 10. So in this case, to evaluate this, um, f of 10, I'm going to just figure out what this output now is because I can evaluate it. 3 times 10 is 30. 30 plus 10 is 40. So f of 10 is 40. Notice what this is saying is that if I plug the value 10 into f, I plug it in, it's going to spit out a 40. And the way I get to the 40, it tells me through the rule right there. So, you know, I could say like f of negative 3. Notice f of input is 3 times input plus 10. So 3 times whatever the input is plus 10. Negative 9 plus 10 is 1. So f of negative 3 would be 1. Again, this is uh, showing me, I know I'm kind of beating the point to the ground. But it's telling me if I plug in negative 3 into this machine, it will spit out a 1. Notice what it, it gives me is this like collection of points. Every input is matched to exactly one output. Like 10 goes to 40, and negative 3 goes to 1, etc. They're, they're associated with each other. And this function, I just can plug in anything I want, and... Uh, stuff's just going to pop out of it. So let me define a couple other functions here. We'll mess around with them a little bit more. 
I'm going to erase a little bit, give us some space. So I said f of x is 3x plus 10. Um, I'll also say g of x, I can name a different function. And I'll say that this one is x squared plus 2x. And let's throw in another one, h of x. And I'll make this uh, 1 over x plus 2. So there I have some functions. And so let's, uh, let's go evaluate some of these things. I like that color. Um, we already did things like f of 10. Let's do f of negative 7. Let's do g of negative 2. Now I'm going to make that a negative 3. And let's evaluate h of uh, 5. So as we go to evaluate these, again, this is saying plug negative 7 into the function f. So f, the function, is um, 3 times the input plus 10. So this would be 3 times the input plus 10. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 plus 10. Negative 11, I think. So f of negative 7 equals negative 11. Uh, g of negative 3, if I plug in negative 3, um, notice this function, x is, x is the input. x is like a dummy spot. It's, it's holding the input spot. So input squared plus 2 times input. In, in a way, it, not in a way, I am saying let x equal negative 3. Plug it in. So this would be um, g of negative 3. g is input squared plus 2 times input. So negative 3 squared, negative times the negative is positive, it's positive 9. Uh, 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 9 minus 6 is 3. So g of negative 3 is 3. If I plug negative 3 into that machine, it spits up positive 3. Similarly with h, the function h is 1 over whatever the input is plus 2. So uh, 1 over, the input happens to be 5. 5 plus 2 is 1 7. So h of 5 is 1 7. So you can evaluate these um, just by plugging in values and get these, specific, um, get these specific answers. Let's do a couple more examples like this. So I'm going to do some erasing. The nice thing about um, these functions, it's kind of a level of abstraction that's, that's farther than we've, than we've gone before. We're used to letting just the letter stand for number, like x equals 5. Right? I and mean, we're all pretty comfortable with that. Or we could say like um, a equals 9. I mean, we like I said, we've, we've seen that for a while. What we're doing now is we're actually letting a letter, f or, or g or whatever, stand for a process or stand for a relationship between an input and an output. It's kind of one step up in, in abstraction. Um, and again, by letting that happen, what we're doing is we're giving ourselves some powerful tools. So, for example, this 3x plus 10 or this x squared plus 2x, um, I may want to just use them over and over again. It's almost like um, playing with Legos or something where you just, you can put these pieces together. So, for example, if I wanted to go like f of 5 plus g of 9, Notice what I've done is I've, I've encapsulated a bunch of information by doing that because I know what f is uh, in this case. f can be whatever I define it as. I define it as this. And g, I know what g is. So if I'm saying this, what I'm saying is um, calculate f, calculate g, and then add those answers together. In other words, plug 5 into that f machine, get your answer. I'm not drawing these pretty. Uh, plug 9 into that G machine, get that answer, and then add those answers together. So I'm kind of hooking these machines up to each other uh, by, by writing this. So let me evaluate what this would be. So F of 5 means plug 5 into F. So 3, 5 plus 5 times 10. And then add that to when I plug 9 into G. So I'm going to plug 9 into G, uh, 9 squared plus 2 times 9. So that'd be 15 plus 10 plus 81 plus 18. And I just add everything together. Just do a couple of pieces here. That'd be 99. That'd be 109. That'd be 124. 
So f of 5 plus g of 9 is equal to 124. Again, I can plug these machines, uh, I can connect them up, I can hook them up. Um, I could also calculate something like 4 times h of, uh, of 1. Yeah let's, yeah, let's make that 1. So notice this is saying 4 times h of 1, whatever 1 is. So let me try that. 4 times h of 1 is 1 over, whoops. I know what I'm going to plug in for x, that's 1. Input plus 2, that's 4 times 1 third, which is 4 thirds. So this means I can also do stuff like saying, um, what is a 2g of 3 minus 3f of 2? So notice what this is saying. I'm going to take 2g of 3s, and I'm sub going to subtract 3 f of 2s from that. Great, so let's give it a try. Uh, so this would be 2 g of 3s. So that means I plug 3 into g. It goes into both those export, um, input spots. 3 squared plus 2 times 3. And I'm going to subtract 3 f of 2, so I'm going to plug 2 into f. So let's see, this is uh, 9 plus 6, which is 15. So I'm going to have two 15s, and I'm going to subtract 3. This is 6 plus 10, which is 16. I have three 16s from that. So I can keep going from here. Uh, two 15s, that's 30, minus uh, 3 times 16, that's 48. 30 minus 48 is negative 18. So again, I can, I can connect these up hook them up together like that. I'm going to do some erasing. So F and G and H, you know, I just happened to, to define them as these things. So I'm going to, I'm going to change what they are right now, just so you don't start getting the idea that F is always 3X plus 10. It's just what I, what I made it. So now it's going to be, um, I don't know, how about 5X minus 3? And we'll make G into uh, 2x plus 3, and we'll make h, I can't tell if it's this color, I'll go with that color, um, I have trouble differentiating the colors, uh, I'll make it a, a 2x squared minus a 3x. All right, so, well, I'm wondering, what would f of a be? So you might know, because um, you know that f of 5 is 5 times 5 minus 3, or f of 7 is 5 times 7 minus 3, right? This is just my input. I'm just putting that into it. And these ones I can evaluate. I can do that combination. f of uh, pi would be 5 times input. Input happens to be pi minus 3. You know, f of smiley face we'll make it more smiley, is uh, 5 times smiley face minus 3. This is just literally saying 5 times input minus 3. So this must be 5 times A minus 3, and that's my answer. I can't simplify it anymore. If I had said what's, uh, what's F of B, well, that's 5 times B minus 3. You know, 5 times the input minus 3. If we can combine them, we will. Uh, but if we can't, well, you know, we'll just leave it. Uh, like it is. Take it as far as we can. An additional idea is uh, is this. What if I went f of g of 4? So notice what I'm doing here. Um, I'm plugging 4 into g and I'm getting some answer and then I'm plugging that answer into f. So if I think about this, like, as these machines, I have my, my G machine, I plug 4 into it, I get some answer, whatever it is, and then I'm going to plug that answer into F, and then I'll get my ultimate answer. So let me, uh, 
just as a little aside here, g g of 4, well, that's 2 times 4 plus 3, which is 8 plus 3. So g of 4 is equal to the number 11. So that means that if I plug 4 into g, I get 11. g of 4 is 11. So I can now find f of 11. So plug 11 into f, 5 times 11 minus 3, 55 minus 3 is 52. Again, notice what we did. We plugged 4 into g, got our answer, and we plugged that answer into f. It helps to think of this as, uh, as order of operations. You know, um, you go inside the parentheses as far as you can. You take the 4, plug it into g. Then you take that answer and plug it into f. You're kind of working your way out from here. So all that work, notice what we got, f of g of 4 is 52. So let me do the other way. What if I want g of f of 4? Um, so I'm going to plug it in. So I'm going to plug 4 into f. So f of 4, that's 5 times 4 minus 3. So 20 minus 3 is 17. f of 4 is 17. So now that means I'm going to go g of 17, because f of 4 is equal to that. So g of 17, I plug that in, 2 times 17 plus 3, uh, 2 times 17, 20, 34 plus 3 is 37. That's interesting, um, 37. The order that I do these in is important. Uh, f of g of 4 is not the same as g of f of 4. Um, so we, a mathematician would say those, those don't commute. In other words, if you do them in one order, you get a different answer. That if you do them in important. There's one other representation I want to talk about with functions. And so far we've talked about them just, you know, written as a rule. And remember when I first started talking about it, I did start to list this, you know, input output pair. So it could be that I don't know the rule necessarily for my, for my function. And so what I could have, I'm going to erase this F because I'm going to use F again just because it's convenient. Um, so I can have a function as a set or a collection of pairs. So let me show you what it looks like. Um, F is the set, and I could have like three, 3 goes to 5, 7 goes to 9, 2 goes to negative 3, 6 goes to 8, 10 goes to 17. And that's it. So... I don't even necessarily have to see that there is a, you know, the, some way that I constantly get from input to output. But I do know that I have this collection of inputs and outputs, and this is everything in here. So if I were to ask, uh, given this definition, if I were to ask for F7, what I'm saying is I'm going to input 7 into F, and my answer would be 9 because nine is hooked up with that seven. This collection is this collection of points, these x, y's that are in here, they're basically inputs and outputs. And this is essentially like a lookup table. So if I said, uh, great, what's f of 10? I can look in here and go, well, if the input was 10, the output 17. It would be like that. Like I said, it's just a lookup table. And all the same you know, stuff applies if I said like, uh, 3 times um, f of 2, well, f of 2 is negative 3, so that would be 3 times negative 3, which is negative 9. Uh, one thing that's interesting about this is there are some uh, limitations to it. In other words, if I asked you, well, what's, uh, what's f of negative 8? And you look and you're like, this doesn't have an input of negative 8? That means there's... There's nothing. There's no solution to that. In other words, this F machine, if you try and plug a negative 8 to it, um, it's just not going to react. It's not going to do anything. So that's thinking about it in a, in a set collection. So what I'd like you to do is practice, uh, you know, look at the problems in the set, get some good practice in, get really comfortable with this notation. Um, it's going to, you'll just see it through the rest of your, of your math career.
Hey, send me emails for those questions. I really appreciate it when you guys ask me questions. Post them in the forum or email it to me if you rather would. And uh, enjoy this chapter.